Let us pray and then we will hear the word of the Lord uh, this morning. Latino Keriso in the Nitao, and Latino Mato Talo is of Bello Yesu, and we all say Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are the two in the Nitao. Yeah, so my love to see from Mona in the Yakopo, Yalon Tapuelua, Faipuelus, Matasi Eo in the Faipuelua Sefuru Maleono. James chapter 2, uh, we will be looking this morning at verses 21 and 20, uh, through to 26. Uh, James 2 verses 14 through the 26 has been a portion of the book of James where we are looking at a series of tests that James is taking us through. And this morning we are going to be looking at the, the second half of this portion of the Bible. Um, ole Faipula and Lusumatasi say your oil in the Faipua Luce Fulu Maleono. Ah, Utefia Tala Noi, Onala and Amata in the Mata Upu Ile Ile Esse Senga Ole Fatu or Tua or Lo Ola Malefatu or Tua or Lo Mate, Bole Fatu or Tua or Lo Oti Manatua E Yay, a Fatu or Tua Ye, Lua, ah, or Lo Yay in the Tangy Nay, Ile La Lomani. So when we look at faith, Last week we learned that there was <coughs> dead faith. But today we want to look at the rest of the second chapter of James because there is living faith. And so we will look at that this morning. So the book of James is written to those believers who had come to faith. But remember that these Jews had lived their whole lives carrying out the law. So they were almost, their, their whole redemption, the whole forgiveness, the whole atonement was through the law system and was based on works. Lona winga ole o langa a toa male so e fua lotu ole tangata yuteia ole tausia o tula fonu. A ina ua o o maina ile faatua tua e awala ile alofa tu noa. O ila na ba aya ya ya kopo ua a mata ona yai nisi o e faatua tua. A e fai mai e le tataula ona yai ni ngalu wenga. Lela. So what we're looking at is that these Jews that James was looking at, that there were those Jews who were saying, oh, we are now saved by grace. It's only by faith. Then they started sitting on their laurels and thought, no, we don't have to do any works because Christ has fulfilled the law. What James is addressing here in this part of chapter 2 is that the evidence or the outworking of a true regenerated heart is the outworks of righteous <coughs> works. Ah, is the evidence of righteous works because of the salvation that the heart now knows. So that's what the context is. If you look at Ephesians chapter 2, and in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul writes these words. I'm just going to read these words. 
Because Paul writes here in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through to 10, For by grace you have been saved through faith. So that's the grace that the Jews had come to know. Ah, okay then, we are saved by grace through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. But remember, Paul is writing these words after James. So James has seen it in the early church. James is the first letter of the New Testament. But we see that Paul is addressing this here, that yes, amen, we are saved by grace alone. And verse 9 says, not of works, lest we boast. But then Paul goes on to say in verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Praise the Lord. So when we are saved, we are created as his workmanship in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we are saved, but we are created. Once we are saved, we're created for good works. Ah, once you are saved, then you should outwork in righteous works. Amen? So, Lono Winga, Ole Fatua Tua Lefe Maye Paulo, Ole Fatua Tua Faola Naita Ato, Ele Onga Winga, Na Nei Mita Mita Setasi, Aya Fatua Tua Lota Nata, Fame for Pusifuru, Olana Lava Nalu Wena Itato. Na faya ita ato ya teriso yesu ina ya faya na guena lele. So ole manino ya ole afiyonga ale atua. The word of God is absolutely clear and transparent with regards of the outworking of a regenerate heart. So the test that we're reading in verses 14 right through to 26 is the fact that there is dead faith and living faith. Last week. We saw it in three compartments, and the first part was found in verse 14, that there was an unprofit, unprofitable confession. This is the Christian that would say, yes, I am a believer by word only. And we saw that in verse 14, where it says in verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have work? Amen? Amen. And then, Paul, um, then James asks that question, can that faith, that faith that just professes that he's a believer, can that faith save? The answer is no. The second part we looked at was from verses uh, 15 through to 17, that this faith that professes only is unloving. We see that there is no love towards the lowest part of society or in our communities. Ah. So, Remember there was that, uh, they see someone who has no clothing, or they have no food, and we learned last week, this person that professes faith would say, hey, warm yourself and feed yourself. And then they keep to themselves. Ah. Then the third part is, is that we see that this person, or the one who has dead faith, professes that they are a believer, is unloving and also unwise. And James calls this person foolish. Ah. So we see that in verse 16. Um, oh, sorry, we see that in verse uh, 19. You believe, 19 and 20, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? So we looked last week at the dead faith. <coughs> Na 
o leo nanga lua fa mai fa ko suma lima yo fa ko suma fitu o le tsangatsa e matsele fa atua tua e le ai se alofa manona tsolu o le tsangatsa e matsele fa atua tua fa mai le fa mai tsa ua e ya ko po o le vale ia le ala na tsatso matsa matsa e fa ko lua se fulu fa mai le tsangatsa ba le ai e te le fia i lua ia o a mate lava le fa atua tua pe a le ai ngalwenga so u sema tsofa fine o le o le o le upu ale atua e a nga ina ia e to to fo to fo ya oe ya te oe malo fa atua tua be fa ama o nia po ola fa atua tua i think it's a good word for us that we are able to look at these tests that James is is giving us and for you as a believer to examine to test yourself and say well have i got dead faith or do i have living faith so james goes on to actually look at a couple of examples um, in the book of james chapter 2 and we're going to look at two examples that james uses at the end of chapter 2 to talk about the example of living faith ah o ila ona almaya ya kopo ni ata fa ata ita isegua ile soi fuwa mo le tsangatsa le ne o apera amu ma le tsangatsa le ne o ra ava ina ia au mai ai pe fa ata atia mai ai e ya kopo ya te o ile tsangatsa fa atua tua ma le tua e le na o tsangatsa yu te ya ai mo ta to uma o le ale a o onga ta to te mau a mai ile o lango apera amu ma le o lango or other so we're going to read through verses 21 through to 26 as James brings us to this part of the series of tests ah so we we've been looking at the series of tests you've been thinking okay cool the test of endurance the test of temptation the test of my response to God's word uh the test of loving others and not showing favoritism so all of these tests are building and building and building so that we can see our MIA genuine believer praise the lord so it's at all time when i'm fight pull a loose my tassy my net i fight some way for sabo you on a all fight a winger there on for palan ya Se <laughs> Who <laughs> Uh, verses uh, 21 Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God you see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also So here we're looking at uh the end of chapter 2 and the first example that James points to is an old testament character to us as bible readers but to the Jews it's the father of their nation ah so them as ethnic people when you say Abraham that's their father that's who they know 
That's who the forefathers and whom God had given the promises. So James now breaks out and gives them an example of living faith by using this man, Abraham. so that when we read verse 21, it says, Was not our Abraham our father justified by works? So when that question comes up in verse 21, we think about and consider what the book of Hebrews writes about Abraham. And in verse 17 to 19, Hebrews captures Abraham's faith in this way. Remember, this is in that famous chapter of the, uh, the, the Hall of Faith. Ah, these are all the patriarchs and uh, they were talked about with regards to their faith. And Hebrews writes, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, and Isaac your seed shall be called. Verse 19 says, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. So this is the New Testament's record with regards to the forefathers of the Israelites with regards to Abraham. Because Abraham was a life of faith. When we uh, think about the testing that Abraham went through, the testing is found in the book of Genesis chapter 22. And this is uh, the specific part of the story where God calls Abraham to bring his son. This is the son. If you know the story of Abraham, this, this is the son in whom all of the promises are wrapped up in. Uh, it's Isaac. Remember, Abraham had another son. And so, but it was the first son, the son of the promise. So when we think about Isaac, this is the son in whom God has given the promises. But in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2, it says, God says to Abraham, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering one of, on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. This is a hard instruction to us as people. But to Abraham, a man of obedience and a man of faith, it wasn't. How do you know? You can tell by all of the actions. We're talking about living faith. Ah. Atatofeta <laughs> 
yatse oe. E fai ngata ile manatu ole tangata, a ile tangata ole faatu atua, e le o se mea fai ngata. Ai sea, ole tangata faatu atua, o lo oyei lea, faatu atua ola. Abraham had living faith. You can tell by his actions, he carried out the will of God. We see in verse 8, because Isaac decides to ask a question. In verse 8, he says, uh, he says in verse 7, sorry, my father, and his father says, here I am, my son. Uh, so Abraham's probably hesitating, okay, there's going to be a question. Isaac says, my father, we must remember here, Isaac is not a child at this time. Isaac is a young adult. So he would have spent years seeing his father sacrifice and unto the God of Abraham. So Isaac asks the question. He says, My father, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So Isaac knew that there had to be a lamb. Listen to the response of one with living faith. This is Abraham's answer. My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Praise the Lord. So Abraham knew that the Lord will provide a lamb, even if it meant that Isaac, he would have to sacrifice. Why? Because it says in the book of Hebrews that Abraham knew that God was able to what? Raise him up from the dead. Living faith. Ola <laughs> Praise the Lord. We see here living faith. When we go back to our book of James, there's a line there in verse 22. Or at the end of verse 21, actually, it says, Do you see that faith was working together with his works? Abraham's faith was working together with his works. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we see the evidence, the outworking of your faith. And Abraham has given us an example because in verse 22 of James, it says, Do you see that faith was working together with his works? The word there, um, working together, comes from the Greek word synergeo, where we get the word synergy. Ah, that's the English word synergy. The meaning of the word synergy is to work together, that our faith and works go together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At, right at the end of verse 22, it says, uh, sorry, uh, verse 22, 
Etse nei loa ea na ngā ulue whaatasi le whaatua tua ma ana ngā luwenga. O le ngā luwenga whoi ua ātua tua hai le whaatua tua. Right at the end of verse 22 it says, Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That we as believers, if we're testing and examining ourselves and we're thinking, how do I know that my faith is genuine? It says that you need to be working together with your works. With regards to Abraham, it says that by works, his faith was made perfect. The meaning of the word perfect, uh, made perfect actually, those two words together is the Greek term teleo'o. And it means that it is complete. Praise the Lord. So made perfect is a complete. When you have faith and the works, the outworking of your, of your faith, it is complete. It is made perfect. That we as believers must continue to strive to continue to aspire to the will of God with regards to our faith and the evidence that shows our faith. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. When we look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, John, which is another book of testing of your faith, that whole book of John is about how do you know you're a believer? How can you confirm and affirm that you are in the faith? And John says there in 1 John chapter 2, verse 5, there's the notion of being perfected when you keep His Word. Praise the Lord. Huh? That when we keep God's word, that when we um, continue to adhere and obey God's word, the scriptures, then that's being made complete. That's being perfected in God. Praise the Lord. So again, there's a very practical element to the book of James. so when we look at um when we look at the life of uh, Abraham, we're continually seeing this theme. Huh? There's this theme of faith and works going together, being made complete or being perfected. Um, then we look down further, and in verse 23, Ona <laughs> 
alona fa upoyono olo ya ile fa upoyono le upulea ale atua fa mai le fa mau mau nga mose wa fa atua tua foi o ia ya yova ona ta wa mio tonuina mai ya idea ya teia in verse 23 of James it actually is a quote from when Abraham was first called by God so that is found in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. And in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, if I can have us look at Genesis 15. And this is years before he actually offered up uh, Isaac, as, or when he was told to offer up Isaac as a burnt offering. But years before that, God says to Abraham, here in... Uh, that he was going to call Abraham. He was going to be a promise he gives to Abraham. The Abrahamic covenant that some of us may be familiar with. So when Abraham obeys God with regards to the promise that he gives him, the covenant that he gives him, it says in verse 6 of Genesis 15, and he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. <coughs> So even before there was Isaac, even before he had uh, moved according to the plan of the Lord for his life, Abraham believed. Ah. And when he believed, he account, it was accounted to him for righteousness. We're talking about living faith. And living faith, we, with regards to Abraham, we see this accounting term. Ah. It was accounted to him for righteousness. For many people in Iono, for my Uata Wami or Tonuina, my dear, or here Yate, your honor, or the Fa Tua Tua, or the Tamatale, nay, or after Amo, or the Uku Lea, or Yaita Wami or Tonuina, or the Fa Opo, ah, for the two in Atu, never appear, my little Fasa more, in the two sea at Tato Italian Yapo, for my Fatu to Upper Amo in the two, for my Nata Uai, Lea Yate, a five. When we see the life of Abraham, it says that it was accounted for him. This word here, accounted to him, it's an accounting term. Ah. So righteousness was imputed to Abraham because of his faith. If you look at Galatians 3, we can turn to Galatians 3. Paul writes about Abraham's faith here with regards to being made righteous. We're talking about living faith. And Abraham's already shown us it's made complete when works and faith go together, ah, being perfected. But now we also see that it was accounted to him by righteousness, for righteousness. And if we read in Galatians verse 6 to 8, it says, Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Praise the Lord. All of us, including us, who are Gentiles, we're not Jews, including us, we are also accounted unto righteousness if we have faith says in verse 8 and this uh, therefore uh, 7 therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham and the scriptures and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith that's us mm -hmm. preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying and you all the nations shall be blessed so we are blessed by the faith that Abraham has, that righteousness is accounted to us. Praise God. But we now know that Abraham, his faith was made perfect. Why? Because of his works. 
le fa tu tu le sa ya apera amo na fa mai le tato tu si fa tau ile ta ya le ne fa mai na ngalu lu e fa ta si le fa tu tu ma ana ngalu wenga le la wa ta wa mi o to nu ina fo ita to ina wa fa tu tu ta to ya ke riso ye su so e ta wa mi o to nu ina fo ita to in lo ta to fa tu tu a o ta to wi lo o le fa tu tu e o la o le fa tu tu le e yai fa ta si mangalu wena pe yo apra amo a fa mai na yo le fa yo le fa yo pule na fa yo le wasu ma le to sa ta u a fo yo ya o le wo at the end of verse 23, James writes that Abraham not only was accounted to him for righteousness, so this righteousness that Abraham had right before he was, he even saw Isaac, he didn't even see Israel, he didn't even see the 12 tribes, he didn't even see the, the promised land, none of that was ever seen by Abraham, yet he had faith. Then it was made complete or perfect with regards to his actions, living faith. Then it was accounted to him for righteousness. But then James carries on and he says this extra line and he says, and he was called a friend of God. When we look at um, Isaiah 41 verse 8, this is, the, this is the prophet Isaiah talking about Abraham as the friend of God. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. For many more than what Isaiah alone has told you, a fast woman has seen for quite a while. If at all, he let ya Abraham or the world let you up. For many of us to sing a Isaiah, tell quite a fast woman has seen for quite a while. A o o Israelu, a Israelu e lau o o na. O oe ya kokoe, lena o fifidia, o le faa nau a apera amu, o la u wo. O i tato te faa ia, i le tangata le ni o apera amu, i lo na faatu o tua o lo o o la, o le tangata na maafuta, vaala lata, no lea tua. Fa pefea na tato i loa, a e faitao le tu si, a yoane amu na tapu suma lima, Fa mai le upua Yesu i ona so e fatatau i le wo. So fa mai la yo Yesu a faitu te tau si a upolo inga. I'm sorry, fourteen. O a wo o to. So ole ole fa matala ina le Yesu ole wo. Fa mai Yesu i ana i lana o so. O a wo o to pe a faitu te faia me a u malava o te faia tu wai ya te o to. O te le to e ta ua o to o au auna, a wā e le i loa e le au auna, mea e faia e lona ali'i. A ua o ta ua o to o wō, a wā ua o whaai loa atu ya te o to, mea uma na o whaalongo i lo o tamā. O le ala le wingo le wō, o le winga le au mai e le atua, a e Yesu ke riso e whatatau i lona au so, ma le ta ua o e la to o lana wō. O i lato o e faia le finangalo o le tama. Na le fai mai a, fa mai wo o ta wina atu, mea u ma i ate o to. Fa i lo atu i ate o to, mea u ma lava, na o fa a longo ai i lo o tama. Lono wina, o apera amu, e o la lona fa atua tua, a wana te i loa le finangalo o le atua. Ae ba ae nei le ba a ba la lata o le fai nga wo, e i loa le lei e le wo, mea u ma lava, O la na wo, ha. Lo na wina, o le ata le au mei apera amo, e le e ngata wo ta wami o tonu wina o ia i le faatu o tua. Wo faatu o tua ina, lo na faatu o tua ina, wo yai faata si manga luena. A e e la va la nata te le apera amo, ma le tua. Lo na wina, o le tangata e faatu o tua pe e ola lo na faatu o tua, e yai e lo le nei e ia le fina ngara o le tamata. When we look at the definition that Jesus gives with regards to being a friend, we see a definition given in John chapter 15. When Jesus says to his disciples, these are his final words before the cross. And we look at verse uh, 14 and 15, and Jesus uses the friends term. So Jesus says to the disciples, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. When we look at the descriptor of a friend from the perspective of Jesus, 
It's whoever does his commands. A friend is one who carries out the commands of the Savior. When we look at what he says in verse 15, he says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know or does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. If you consider a friendship, it is intimate because they know everything about each other. And the descriptor that's been given about Abraham, his living faith, is because he knew God intimately. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So the example that, uh, that Abraham gives us, and we finish off this section of James today, because in verse 24 it says, You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. A man is justified by works and not by faith only. What is it saying there? It's faith and works. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's the test. You should be giving yourself up. That's the test. Am, am, I, am I outworking my faith? What do my righteous deeds look like? Is my behavior righteous according to the, to the word? Because now it's saying that Abraham was a friend of God. And the friendship is an intimacy of knowing God's will. Praise the Lord. Ah. So three things that Abraham gives us is that his life was made perfect. His faith was made perfect because it was done together with works. Two, it was accounted as righteousness. Ah, praise the Lord. And then three, it said that he was a friend of God. That's my prayer. My prayer is that I want to know the will of God. I want to be intimate with his will. And his will is not something that's out here. No, his will is right here. That if we know him intimately through the word, then we'll be considered a friend, uh, someone who knows his will. A second person from the Old Testament is given, and that is a woman by the name of Rahab. Rahab is probably the total opposite of Abraham. Not only is she a woman, Abraham is a man. Abraham is the father of Israel. Uh, Rahab is a Gentile. And Abraham is considered the father of Israel, the father of faith, the ultimate example of this ethnic group. And Rahab is a harlot. But if you look at the living faith, we get to see an example from this woman. I love the way that the word of God works, that it's not only to one group of people, it's even to ones we might consider, man, that's the, the dirt of the world, the lowest of the low, and yet we see the example of living faith. We find her story in Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 2. If you turn with me to chapter 2, because I want to I wanna have a look at the life of this woman. Um, and, and Rahab, uh, we know the story of Rahab from the journeys of Israel. So those of us who are doing the walk through the Bible, uh, Old Testament, you'll be familiar with Israel. When they first um, left the wilderness and were about to launch into the promised land, Jericho was the first city to be conquered by Joshua and the Israelites. Or Yeriko or Lenoomua Mualea. Safa bear on Si Tawa Ye Israelu, 
e awala ile fina ngalo ole atua ina ia ina ia si o si o ina pe um, saba lia pao ye riko fa afitu wa tasi le aso e tasi tasi le aso lona lua o o atu la vele aso lona fitu fa afitu ona ta amilo isara elu e ona pa ua ilea o, o pao ye riko so o le tala la lea ile amatanga o le tala lea e maua ile tangata lea ingoa ya ra ava when we look at Joshua chapter 2, we see in verse, uh, right at the beginning of Joshua, we see that Joshua sends a couple of spies to spy out Jericho, because this is going to be the first city that they're going to conquer according to the will of the Lord. But we see here that right at the beginning of um, sending out the spies, um, the two spies actually go to the house of Rahab. And when they arrive there, the king hears, the king of Jericho hears that there are a couple of spies in their city to spy out their city. And then a messenger of the king comes to Rahab and says, Hey, bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all of the country. This woman, Rahab, um, then goes on to defy the king. So this is her, the first part that we hear about this woman, Rahab is that she defies the king and she says to the men that were sent to her yes the men did come to me but I did not know where they went from uh, and it happened as the gate was being shut when it was dark that the men went out when the men went out I do not know pursue them quickly uh, that you might overtake them she was telling an absolute story to try and send the men away and then her action was in verse 6 but she brought them up to the roof Hid them with stalks of flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. That when we look at her actions, it's the actions of someone that has living faith. Now let's look at what her profession is. Ah, what does she profess? This is, remember, this is a Gentile woman. If you look at verse 9 through to 11, this is what she says to the two spies. I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven, above and on earth beneath. Now therefore I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to my father's house. And give me a true token and spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters and all that I have. And deliver our lives from death. What we see here is a Gentile woman. There was no preacher in Jericho. There were no Bibles in Jericho. She only heard of what the God of Israel did for Israel when they came out of Egypt. And then she says, what I know is that your God is the Lord God. For he is God in heaven above and on earth. What's that a testimony of? That's a testimony that she has believed. So her actions was because she had living faith. You see the action there? Ah, there's faith, 
She testified, yes, I believe that the God of Israel is the God of heaven and earth. What did she do? She defied the king. When you think about that, when you defy a king, you'll be, you'll be killed for treason. That's what she was up for. She was up for being killed, but she wasn't going to give these spies away. What's the blessing of Rahab? The blessing of Rahab is that she becomes a part of the lineage of the Messiah. Wow. Talk about bringing someone that's of the lowest part of society and God would raise that up to give us, the reader, an example of living faith. Let's finish off. Verse 26. In verse 26 of the book of James, he wraps it up by giving us the analogy of a dead body. The analogy of a dead body is, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. This is the test, brothers and sisters. In the book of Psalms, it says, uh, about a dead person, it says, His spirit departs, he returns to earth, and that very day his plans perish. When your soul is not in your body, you're dead. Right? Yes. Everyone can attest to that. If you don't have a soul, it means you're dead. Ah, that's it. But that's the only reasoning you can give. That's exactly the same with regards to your faith. If you say you have faith, but you don't have the works to back it up, your faith is dead. You don't have real faith. And you therefore need to examine again, test again, am I of the faith? Am I a true Christian or just a professing Christian? Because it's as good as dead. That's what verse 26 tells us. <laughs> Usumatofafine, <laughs> I live aya ile holanga suvia. Ah, praise the Lord. Because when we look at verse 14 um, in James uh, chapter 2, what does a prophet, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can that faith save him? Verse 17, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it's dead. Verse 20, but do you not know, O foolish man, 
that faith without works is dead. James is saying it time and time and time again. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. I have a little faith for a young couple or two see my from my faith with some of my Se ala nga pe a fai mai se ta siwa ya te ia le fa atua tua a ele ia te ia nga gwenga e ma fai e a ele fa atua tua o na fa aula ia te ia. Fa mai fai kwesu ma fitu e fa pe a fo i le fa atua tua pe a fai e le ia i nga gwenga e mate la ba ia a wa wa na o ia. Fa i kwelu skuru le tangata ba le a e te le fi a i loa e a wa mate la ba le fa atua tua pe a le a i ni nga gwenga. Well, if I'm learning to, I'll only for a man not to. Praise the Lord. It's a test. If we consider the judgment, if you consider the judgment that Jesus Christ talks about in Matthew chapter seven, twenty-one to twenty-three, and Jesus says there, not everyone who says to me on the day, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Jesus goes on to say, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Verse twenty-three. Jesus says, "And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness." We have to remember that we must have living faith, because at judgment we will be judged for our faith, whether it be living. Or did? Ah, for me, le upo Yesu ile matai umta po fitu. Le for me ye e fa atatau ile aso le uma. For me upo Yesu e le sa watu le malo le langi lato uma we fa mai le ali ye le ali ye na o le a na te fa ya le fina ngalo lotsa ma o le langi. E to tele lato fa mai ya te awi le aso le ali ye le ali ye. Ma tau te le i pera fita ne e a i lawi ngoa. O lawi ngoa fo i na mātou tu li a i te moni. O lawi ngoa fo i na mātou fai a i ba benga e te le. A fa mai le fai unga. O na o tau tino atua i le a te i la tau. O te le i loa lava o tau. I na o e se i a o tau i a te a. Le fai unga tatou ma tau kui le ni tai au. O le fa a ma lo si. O le fa a ma lo si. Ina ia e i loa ma mauti noa, o loa ia te oe le whaatua tua, o loa oola. Praise the Lord. Le ala se whaina e te tauona e whaia ina ia i loa ai, le whai mei paulo i le lua koronito, ta koe sfuma tolu, kai koe lima. Fa mai i nga tofo tofo ia o tau, ia te o tau, po ua o tau i le whaatua tua. Tofo tofo a oe ia te oe. Ha. E mo fai ana tofo tofo oe mai pe sili a oe ia te oe. Po oe ia te au e ale fa atua tua. Fa mai fai unga fai upulea, i nasu e su e ifo ia ia te o to, pe e to te leilua e a o o to loto. Ah, e pe sili a oe ia te oe. E tofo tofo lava oe ia te oe. E su e su e ifo lava oe ia te oe. Ma e fa ape e ifo, po oe to tomu ia te o to o ye e su ke riso. Ha. Na lera fai mai fai fai uma fai ku pe a fai ua ne pe pelo o to. Na lera pata inga a Paulo le o lo fai mai ne ite ne i fa apea oi o oi o tanga ta fa tu tu a ai o lo pelo mia la vai oi oi. Praise the Lord. Ah. Just to finish us off, we look at Second Corinthians chapter thirteen. Because the question is, well, how 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 do I know if I have living faith? And Paul gives us a very practical tip. 13 verse 5 of 2 Corinthians, Paul says, Number one, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. You ask the question, do, do I, am, am I just calling myself a Christian? Or how do I know that I'm a Christian? Do I know the gospel? Do I know the basics of salvation? Because now I know that back in Ephesians, Fred talked about that if it was grace that saved me, not works. It was God's grace that saved me. Do I believe that? Do I really believe that? It says there in verse 5, Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves 
that Jesus Christ is in you? Because then Paul finishes off verse 5 with these words, unless indeed you are disqualified. It means that you're lying to yourself. Ah. You're lying to yourself if you say that you're a Christian, but you ain't. Why? Because we now know that a Christian has faith and works. There is evidence. It is made complete. Your faith is made complete with works. Praise the Lord. Yeah, <laughs> Verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yep, Mr. Fati Vieira, that's all right, Fatasi made. That's all to tell Fatasi. Let us pray together. As you reflect yourself on God's word this morning, our Emana to Natsu, the Upolia to work. Um, it's a time of two to what to look to either to a praise God. Let us pray. To ma, but fit I tell you, you love Upu Moni, Olo Alvea, Mapupu for Amalosi, Mapupu for so so any, Upu Luitao, Moa, to ma. Utifa a maulalo atu iolo. Utifa a maulalo atu iolo. Fa a maulalo atu. Ita mata masala. Ita mata masala. Yo owi loa. Yo owi loa. Lo fa atu atu loa. Lo fa atu atu loa. Ole fa atu atu loa eola. Ona ole madiu oke risu. Ona ole madiu oke risu. Olona tanu mai. Malona toy too, my Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we have heard uh, there is living faith and there is dead faith. Help us to continue to test ourselves, examine ourselves, whether or not we are of the faith. Help us to continue to come back to you. Help us to make a decision. Lord, there may be some of us in the room that have yet to make that decision for the gospel, to put our trust in the person of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection that we will be uh, remembering this week. Lord, and for those of us who are of the faith, help us to continue to consider um, the works, the outworking of our faith, the evidence of our faith. So Lord, we consider these things um, and we pray for these things for each other, for ourselves, for our families, and for our church. We bless your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.